Following on from my previous video in which I tenderized the steak by using a technique called velveting, I got even more curious as to how we could tenderize steaks even better whilst not affecting the flavor. Well, today I've got three more techniques for you guys, so stick around because we're doing a side-by-side -side comparison. And once again, the stakes are high. So once again, we're gonna be using big rump steaks, thick, juicy, but not always that tender. So this is ideal to show how well these techniques work. So the first steak, as always, is gonna be our control steak. We're not doing anything apart from seasoning that steak. No tenderization whatsoever. This is the one that's gonna give us an indication of what the steaks are like in their natural state. Our first tenderization technique is gonna be good old mechanical. We're just gonna give the steak a good beating with the back of this meat cleaver to make sure it pulverizes the fibers of the steak. Now this technique I know works because I've tried it myself. However, I wonder what else it's gonna do to the texture of the steak. Is it gonna make it too mushy on the inside? Is it not gonna hold up like a proper steak should? Well, we're gonna find out. The second technique we're gonna to use today is a chemical tenderization. And to do this, we're gonna use kiwi fruit. Now kiwi fruit contains an enzyme called actindin, and this helps to break down the fibers in meat, rendering it really tender. We're gonna take our kiwi fruit and we're gonna blitz it up and we're gonna marinate our rump steaks and we're gonna let it sit there for an hour to let the enzyme work its way through. Very curious as to how this technique works. And the third method we're going to use is also a chemical tenderization technique. This time we're gonna repeat what we did with the kiwi, but instead of that, we're gonna use pineapple. Now pineapple contains another enzyme called bromelain, and that also softens the tissues of the meat. And it's gonna be really interesting to see how that compares to what the kiwi fruit does. And obviously important to this is how the pineapple affects the flavor of the meat, if at all. I'm really, really excited to see how this is gonna work out, guys. So for the kiwi fruit technique, I've got three whole fresh kiwis here, which I'm just gonna dice up roughly, and then I'm gonna stick them in my trusty Nutri-Bullet to blitz them all up. Doesn't matter that the skin's in there because we're only using it as a marinade, that's all gonna get flushed off before we fry the steak, so it's all good. And then we're gonna slather it all over the steak and leave it for an hour to marinate to let those enzymes go to work. For the third and final tenderizing technique today, I'm gonna to use half of this fresh pineapple. I'm gonna take off the skin, chop it into rough chunks and blitz it through the Nutri-Bullet. Then with the blitzed up pineapple, I'm gonna slather this onto the steak and leave it for an hour for the enzymes to break the meat fibers and make the steak hopefully nice and tender and juicy. And now it's time to thoroughly rinse the pineapple and the kiwi fruit off our steaks. After which we're going to pat them dry with kitchen roll ready for cooking. Right guys, so the steaks have all been prepped. This one here is the untreated one and it feels still quite firm as you would imagine. This one as you can see is the one that's been bashed up by the back of a meat cleaver. Much more squidgy. Be interesting to see what this one's actually like. This one is our kiwi fruit one. You can see it's changed the color, it's oxidized the meat already, and uh, it feels squidgier than the untreated one, but uh, we'll have to see. It's been well rinsed, so hopefully it'll minimize any aftertaste. And this one here is the pineapple steak, and this one is very, very squidgy. Something quite drastic's happened here. I'm looking forward to trying this one too. So the next step is to put them in a very low oven, gas mark one, 275 degrees Fahrenheit, 135 degrees centigrade for around 20 minutes. And then we're gonna sear them in a really, really hot pan for about a minute each side. And that's gonna absolutely caramelize the edges and give us some really nice steaks and then, we're gonna taste them, oh yes. But before we put them in the oven, we've got to season them, of course. So I'm gonna drizzle them with a glug of olive oil. And I've got a mix of salt, cracked black pepper, and garlic powder, which I'm generously gonna to apply to both sides. So after 20 minutes in the oven, here are our steaks. From left to right, we have the untreated steak followed by the beaten steak. Next, we have the kiwi steak. And last but not least, we have the pineapple steak.
So we're gonna finish off these steaks by searing them in a very hot pan individually, 60 or so seconds on each side, and then we'll see which one is the best. So we've got from left to right, the untreated steak, the hammered steak, the kiwi steak, and the pineapple steak. Let's see which one is the best, shall we? So we're gonna start with the untreated steak. It cuts quite nice, feels firm, feels like a normal steak. Let's see what it's like. Mmm, not bad. Tasty. It's not that tough. Still got a nice chew on it, but pretty good. Not bad at all. That was actually a better steak than I thought it would be because it was so kind of tight. It just felt like it was going to be quite tough, but it wasn't. Right, we're going to go in for the physically hammered steak, the beaten steak, if you like. Cuts just as well. It is actually more tender. The physical act of striking the meat obviously works. It's got a nice tender feel to it. The flavors are still intact. The only thing is it just feels a bit thinner because it is. And that's the one thing you're always gonna do to a steak if you do hammer it out with either a meat cleaver or a tenderizing hammer or whatever other gadget. It's gonna make the steak physically thinner. So it is gonna feel that way, but that's not such a bad thing. It works just fine. I'm not unhappy with it, but that's all good. Let's move on to the next one. We've got the kiwi steak this time. Just physically cutting it, it looks more juicy. It looks more appetizing. Let's see what it's actually like. It's gone from being normal but nice for the first steak to tenderer with the physically beaten steak. And now we've gone into the territory of melting your mouth. That's really nice, mm, very juicy. It feels altogether like a more expensive piece of steak and that is definitely a good thing. The one thing I will say is there is a very, very subtle and slight change to the flavor. I'm not saying that's a bad thing. I can, I can sense something, I can't actually taste kiwi. I can taste, let me have a little bit more. Let me have a little bit more. Yeah, it's slightly sweeter. I think I knew this was kind of gonna happen because when I seared the steak in the final stage of the cooking and charred much more readily than the first two steaks and that's because there was sugar present in the uh, top surface of the steak. That, that, that must have come from the kiwi fruit. And the kiwi being quite sweet and acidic, it must have changed something and it has. But to be fair, if I didn't know, maybe I wouldn't notice. And I definitely, if I dipped it in mustard, which I normally would, definitely wouldn't have noticed. But on its own, especially compared to the last two steaks, and they've all been seasoned exactly the same, there is a slight difference. But I feel the trade-off is worth it because it is so tender. It feels like a fillet steak. That's how tender it is. And that's got to be a good thing for the sake of a few kiwi fruits, right? And now onto the pineapple steak. Let's see what this beauty's like then. It cuts just as well as the kiwi fruit steak. In the fork, it feels pretty tender. Let's see what it feels like in the mouth. That is really tender, very juicy. But as you can probably tell, it's not quite as tender as the kiwi fruit. However, it doesn't really have any aftertaste. I can detect a slight sweetness, but I think if I didn't know about it in the first place, I wouldn't know if you know what I mean. Hope that makes sense. <laughs> so it's time to pick a winner. In reverse order, number four is, drum roll, the untreated steak. Still a pretty good steak, but definitely more effort to chew than everything else. At number three, the physically tenderized steak. Very, very tender, but you th we thinned out the steak a bit which I'm not a fan of. Um, it's still very, very acceptable and obviously more tender, but I like chunky steaks. I like big, fat, chunky steaks. We have the pineapple, which has done a really good job. It's very, very tender, 
very, very little aftertaste, in fact, hardly detectable, but it loses out to the kiwi because it hasn't made it as tender. I was really, really surprised at just how tender the kiwi fruit has made this rump steak. It has literally turned the rump steak into a fillet steak. And that's pretty amazing. Yes, it has a slight aftertaste, but I can put up with it. I normally dip my steak in English mustard anyway, which gives it a bit of heat and it would definitely hide any aftertaste. But the aftertaste itself is not unpleasant. It's, it's slightly fruity, it's nice, I like it. And I guess some of you might not like it as much as I do. What I'm telling you is what I found out so you can make your own mind up and you can have a go at whichever way tickles your fancy. I like the kiwi. For me, the kiwi fruit has definitely won it. So guys, what do you think? Please leave your thoughts in the comment section below. I'd love to know if you've tried any of these things before and if you've got any other ideas on how to tenderize steak. This has definitely piqued my interest in how to make steaks more tender. It's just fascinating to me what you can do. So I'm gonna look for some more ideas and if I find some good ones, I'm definitely gonna turn them into videos for you guys. In the meantime, if you've got your own ideas and I think they're really, really cool, I'm gonna give them a go and I'll give you a shout out in the videos I make them in. So thank you so much for watching. If you haven't already, please subscribe, like and comment on this video and I'll see you in the next one. Take care guys. Bye-bye.